With Sean Payton in the building, the Broncos head into the offseason full speed ahead. And today we're addressing the team's top three needs heading into the offseason. Welcome into the studio. I am Phil Milani alongside Cindy Jones and Eric Dalala. Guys, uh, when the team struggles like they did last year, there's a lot of needs. What are the top three? What are the biggest things that the Broncos should be addressing this offseason? You know, I think of, you know, different position groups or positions that you could really focus in on that this team needs to address, but also, you know, big picture concepts. So I'm going to do a little bit of both. The first one I think is have to build, find an offensive identity. Of course, this team wasn't able to do that last year, and I think that'll be Sean Payton's main focus. And of course, he's already that's already really begun as he's you know evaluating the players on this team, looking at Russell Wilson's strengths and his weaknesses. So that's already begun. I want to see what he can come up with and what scheme he thinks will work best with Russell. Second one is rebuild an offensive line. Russ was sacked a career high 55 times last season. So you know, looking at the guys that they have right now, I see Garrett Bowles and maybe Quinn Miners, two guys that might come back in the starting rotation. Other than that, I think they'll look to address some of the, those issues in free agency and in the draft. And then the last one for me, this might sound a bit obvious, but I think they need this team needs to be on the same mindset. They need to be on the same page. And I think that goes back to, you know, Sean Payton coming in and wanting to build a winning culture here. I think for this team to play complementary football, they all need to be on the same page. So the offense, defense, special teams can all feed off of each other. And I think that, of course, starts this offseason. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, we know that the culture is going to change. Sean Payton's talked about that. And, yeah, it did seem like at times last year this team wasn't all on the same page. Yeah. So getting on the same page, uh, a big deal heading into the next year. Uh, Eric, what about you? Top three needs. Yeah, I mean, obviously offensive line I think is right up there. But since Sydney mentioned that, I'll, I'll pivot to a different three. One I think has got to be a dominant pass catcher, somebody in this offense that can hurt defenses in a bunch of different ways that week in and week out is going to be a challenge. Now, that guy, Phil, might already be on the roster. It could be a Jerry Judy. It could be a Greg Dulcich. But I think this is more about how you funnel your offense through one person or a couple of guys. And so if that means going out and adding somebody in free agency, going out and adding somebody in the draft, I think the Broncos have to find a way to, to identify one guy who's going to be your weapon and then make things run through him. Uh, secondly, edge rusher. You know, the Broncos have Randy Gregory still. Uh, obviously, when he's healthy, when he's out there, he's a really good player wasn't available all that much last year. And now you've got to figure out, can you rely on Baron Browning, Nick Benito, uh, Jonathan Cooper? You know, are these guys that you can trust to be the starter there? Or do you need to go out and find somebody, I would think maybe in free agency, to help there? Uh, and finally, Phil, this maybe it's a little under the radar, but I think backup quarterback is a place where the Broncos need to be a lot better. Um, and, and that's no disrespect to Brett Rippon, who I think did an admirable job. But if Russell Wilson misses time, you've got to be able to go out and win football games. And I think finding somebody that can play a similar style so that you're not completely changing what you're trying to do, that's going to be important. That could be a veteran out there, whether it's a, a Baker Mayfield, a Case Keenum, um, you know, a Heineke from Washington. Those could be options. But also, if you see a guy like Hendon Hooker in the draft start to fall down the board, Maybe you draft a young quarterback, and, and that's the way you go at that QB2 spot. Is a backup quarterback in place to help push Russell Wilson in case things aren't going the way you want it, or is it just for an injury reason? I think you want both, and that, that could be a reason why a veteran um, helps to, you know, to help Russell be the best version of himself. Russell's the starting quarterback of this team. He's going to be the quarterback of this team. But I, So if you go with a veteran, I think it's purely to help. If you go with a young guy, I think maybe you, you also have a chance to see what do you have for the future in case it doesn't work out. But, you know, obviously for this year and, and hopefully for the years to come, Russell's the main guy. Yeah. Well, we did see him miss a, a couple of games last year. So having a, a guy who you can rely upon at that backup spot is crucial. Uh, I'm kind of in line with you guys. I said bolster the offensive line. I said add an offensive weapon. And I said find another pass rusher. Sydney, what do you think offensive line? Is that more of a draft or a free agent type of thing for you? I would think probably free agency just because of where our, you know, draft picks lie. Of course, we don't have a first or a second round. So, and not saying that you can't find a good third round pick. I mean, I talked about Quinn Miners earlier. He was a third rounder. But, 
you know, I think they'll look to address that sooner than the draft. Yeah, and there's a couple of good players out there. Mike McGlinchey with the 49ers uh, could be available. Uh, Caleb McGarry uh, with the Falcons. Those are a couple of right tackles there that could be available. And then a, a, a bunch of guards, you know, uh, Ben Powers, Isaac Samalu, Nate Davis. Uh, those are a bunch of guys who could come in and make a big difference for the O-line right away. That's something that's not just for us, too, Sunny or Eric. What do you think about the run game is going to be crucial for this team uh, next season as well? Yeah, they've got to get better in that goes to creating an offensive identity. Um, but the offensive line does, I think, bear a lot of the responsibility there. Coaching is another thing. You know, I think we, we heard Sean Payton kind of during Super Bowl media week say, when you go 5-12, and 12, there's dirt on everybody's hands. And so that includes the coaching staff. You've got to find a way to coach these guys up better. Um, you know, in terms of the offensive line, I, I think I trust personally a veteran right tackle more likely to trust a rookie on the inside of the offensive line. Maybe you find a guard in the draft and go get a, a veteran right tackle. Yeah, we'll have to see uh, what moves happen with this Broncos team. One thing we know for sure is that Sean Payton's going to want to come in here and put his uh, thumbprint on this roster, expecting a lot of turnover, and uh, that's what you got to do uh, when you uh, have a season like the Broncos did last year. All right, those are the Broncos' top three needs heading into the offseason. That's going to do it for us. For Eric Dallal and Sidney Jones, I'm Phil Milani.